do you want to draw faster? Do you want to have a stronger, clearer image? Do you want to be able to pick from two, five, ten, a dozen ideas? I feel like my art has improved slowly over time, but there's something I inadvertently started leaving out of my process that ended up making my work worse. I need to bring it back, and here's why you should be doing it too, along with Hat. Whether you're making comics, storyboards, character design, really any kind of art, you should be thumbnailing. That's the process of making small images with either one color or one hue. There's a ton of reasons why this is helpful. Number one, thumbnailing being so small makes it so you're forced to create the broad strokes of your image or design. It's way harder to get hyper-focused on the shading of your character's abs. You're way more inclined instead to figure out the big idea. And that's really important. There's a reason why silhouette is such a big part of character design. It's the shape we're perceiving and reading on first glance. Good design in general does this. It makes things immediately clear to people who may not even be paying that much attention. It might seem attractive to make the most esoteric, you really have to pay attention to it to really appreciate a design that you can, but in a real world application or to the people who are observing your work, the quicker they can understand it, the better. Taze told me this story before of a web designer who, in order to test out how easy his websites were to use, would bring an iPad with a website to bars and find people who had, had been at the, the bar already for a while, so they were um, tired. And then he'd see if they could successfully navigate the site or make a purchase on the site. The audience for your work may not be inebriated, but a lot of times they have split attention or a limited literacy with what you're presenting to them. Thumbnailing and creating that focus can make it palatable. So I'm going to throw the rarest of shade at another group of creators work real quick. Uh, it's something fresh in the mind because it's a trailer I saw the other day for a film called Deep Sea. And I can't emphasize enough that this looks stunningly beautiful. It is an achievement both artistically and technically. I'm not seeking to take away from that. Uh, no doubt a ton of work and effort went into it and I'll probably check out the movie. But as beautiful as it is, the amount of intricacy and overwhelming amount of elements asking for your attention all at once makes these images and sequences a little hard to digest. It's like Syndrome always says, when everything demands the highest tier of the visual hierarchy, it is now visual anarchy. Intricacy can be beautiful, but it needs to be supported with shapes, themes, patterns, strong ideas, and even visual rest and contrast, again, whether that's in something like a design or in the composition of an image. Number two, thumbnailing speeds up your inevitable failure. Being able to fail faster means that you get to make higher quantity and quality of creative work. It inherently takes less time to thumbnail than it does to draw something all the way out which means that when your idea is flawed, you have neither the sunk time nor the sunk cost and sentimentality that makes ditching work harder. It doesn't even mean that you have to start over either. Modifying or fixing a thumbnail is as easy as cutting in or making a few new strokes with the one big brush or tool you're using. You don't have to go through layer by layer or use up half of a physical eraser just to make things right. That faster iteration also makes it so you can create multiple options and choose the one that's strongest. Number three, constraining yourself to either black and white or to only using value makes for stronger images too. If you've painted before, you might be familiar with this exercise of cranking the contrast on an image as far as you can in one direction until you just get the positive and negative shapes. Even though this is really simplistic, you have the structure here to build back in everything in between. So the same can be done with thumbnails. If you're just using black and white or blue and white, whatever color you're using, the strong contrast makes for deliberate choices. If something looks weird or murky at this stage, it will probably only get worse or more murky once you add color and bring down the contrast into the mid ranges of value. Let's talk about that too. I've cited the definition of value a few dozen times on this channel before, but it's basically how light or dark something is. Lots of similar values together make for low contrast and values that are really different from each other make for high contrast. And remember, all colors have value. The pigment or hue and how saturated it is are the other factors that contribute to color. So if you thumbnail something like your comic page or an illustration and figure out which values to use, regardless of the color, that's something that you can bring into the final image. You figure out what's most important in the image, the flow of the image, and maybe even something like, is it daytime and things get darker the closer they are to the front? Or is it nighttime and things are getting lighter the further they are? 
toward the front. It's another form of visual hierarchy where you'd like the eye to go. So how can you get the most out of your thumbnailing, how you do it, and what are some best practices? Well, if you're using a traditional medium, something as simple as blocking off an inch or two sized box and using a pencil is enough to thumbnail. Personally, I prefer the advantages that come with digital. That's because with digital, you can scale your thumbnail up and use it as a reference or even something to trace at that higher resolution and size. Your choice of tool or brush is going to influence the look of your thumbnail, just like the choice of instrument will change the sound of music. Experiment with something blocky or something textured or even slim vertically and horizontally and see what you can get from it. Also remember that your eraser or what you can remove from the thumbnail can be just as useful. It's helpful to think in terms of shapes and not lines with thumbnails too. You can use your eraser to chisel into your shapes like you would with a sculpture. And of course with digital, you can scale a copy of the thumbnail that you like up, but you don't have to jump from the tiny thumbnail all the way up to the full page either. It's actually quite helpful to scale up just a bit so your next iteration is basically a bigger or intermediary thumbnail. What I love about thumbnails is that there aren't really any wrong answers. You're able to keep things really loose. And when I start with a thin pencil and try immediately to build my final image, something about it feels so stiff and a little aimless. Thumbnails help you build up a strong armature for your images and get what's important down fast. Like I mentioned, I've kind of forgot to use thumbnailing in my recent character design process. Remember that chill character design video from a few months back, the plant Sternot video? The end result was pretty good, but I was only using those pencil lines, and I could have gotten through a lot more ideas faster by thumbnailing and working with a little silhouette first. When it comes to illustration, I found that the paintings that I've been able to finish the fastest were the ones like this that started with a good, clear thumbnail. This painting of Clem from Clem's Confectionery is the trading card for August over on Biko's Backpack. You can grab that at patreon.com slash bageldenizen. Check out learncharacterdesign.com if you're interested in a comprehensive character design course, and follow me at bageldenizen everywhere else on the internet. I've been posting new reels over on Instagram and even on, on TikTok after a short break of like two years over there. Have a wonderful rest of your summer. Thank you for watching, and have fun creating.